Join with me, if you would, in the, the greeting and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Let us sing. Let's stand as we sing number 328. Share with the presence of the Lord. We want to hear the um, music first. So this morning, uh, welcome today. This is a Pentecost Sunday. That's why we have the red. And our scripture readings today will be reflective of the day of Pentecost. Our text today will be Acts chapter 2. And uh, you'll notice that Johnny is not at the piano. Uh, John, Jonathan had some issues yesterday, was having some problems spitting up blood, and they're taking him to the hospital. And, Ashlyn and the report this morning is he's actually on the vent and they want us to be praying for for John. He uh, there, go ahead. There's more here the dark than I have to go. And he started spinning up blood. They were at a local restaurant in Ashley. Oh. And they never been to his daughter. And just as she was driving to the hospital, Thank you, Sarah, for the update, and I wondered how they ended up in Ashland. Uh, so we'll continue to pray for uh, Paul and Jonathan, uh, Johnny as they're traveling, and for Jonathan and family uh, today. Um, so we'll do our prayer request in just, just a moment, but uh, our opening prayer today uh, is... On number six, I believe. 
Let's see, I think I... Again, you can join me on this if you'll turn to your hymnal to page 6. And let's pray this prayer together. This is our communion Sunday, and so it's a little different order. Uh, but let's pray this prayer together today. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for illumination is under that, under prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. All right. And I think uh, our next scripture reading is Romans chapter 8. Good morning. Okay, we've the scripture reading from Romans 8, 14 through 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage against to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and of children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ. If so, that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. The word of God for the Lord God. Thank you, God. Let's turn in the... It's also on the screen. Okay, it's on the screen. Number 826. Uh, let's read... Uh, Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34 and 35b. O Lord, how manifold you are, are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Hold up, John, I think either the PowerPoints are different or what page was that? 24. 826. Page 826. Uh, it should be, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Yeah. But that's verse 1, but in the. Bible, okay. It's 30, 24 through 34. Okay. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get with the program here. There we go. <clears throat> O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping Creepy things in the are there. Living, living things, things both small and great. And gray. There go the ships, and Leviathan, whom you formed to play in. Look at all those to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather when you open your pan, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When, when you, you take, take away, away their breath, breath they, they die and return to the dust. dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And, and you, you renew the face of the ground. ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I, I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditations be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Bless the, the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. So then we have our song. Uh, scripture reading is John chapter 14. from John 
14, verses 18 through 17, and 25 through 27. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father? I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The Word cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Do not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's now sing number 368, My Hope is Built.
This week we're going to have our prayer request for things at 550 or 545 because uh, we're going to show the movie, I Still Believe, uh, the story of Jeremy Camp and his family. And it takes a little bit longer. So we're going to have prayer requests first and start the movie right at 6 o'clock. So be here for that. Our Appalachian Parent Secure Baby Balls are due back from Father's Day. So be filling those up. Graduation Celebration Sunday is next Sunday, June 12th. We want to congratulate Andy and Judy Swanson on their new grandbaby, Claire Marie. That's why Andy's not with us today, and we miss him. Any other spoken announcements? We have many this morning on our prayer request. Of course, we want to remember Jonathan Ford uh, and all the family that's with him. Remember Marty Gormley's family. Matt, Mark Harrison, Betty Muncy, Lee Ratliff family, Stevie Joe Litz. Stevie Joe's really having a hard time right now, so please remember him in prayer. Tony Wallen, Greg McKinney, and Christine McKinney, Charles Edmonds, all those traveling, Sandy Walter's mother, James Johnson, Sarah's pre preparing for surgery on July the 10th, uh, all those suffering with COVID at this time. Bill Murphy, Arthur Murphy. Is there any other spoken requests this morning? Carla? July 12th. July 12th, surgery for Sarah. Okay. One of my friends in Tom Murphy's Judy Stevens. She's in my hospital. She's actually up on the patient who we have now, which one of her feeling. Judy Stevens, is that correct? If nothing else, we'll ask our pastors to lead us in prayer. Any unspoken requests for the lift of your hands? I know Cheryl uh, mentioned her sister-in-law. Uh, is there anything you want to add to that? We want to pray for her you, in Morgantown and pray if you guys have to be traveling, she's not doing well. Is there any other thing you want to add to that today? So just, okay, just continue to pray for, for their family. Uh, it's a tough time right now. Let us go to the Lord. we come before you today we give you thanks for your blessings in our lives today and thank you for all that you do and who you are we also Lord confess our sins to you realizing our need for forgiveness and restoration we lift up these prayer requests today that have been given those on our prayer list those that were spoken and those unspoken requests God that you know all about God you know our hearts we lift them up to you today Lord we pray for the church we pray for the church universal as well as the local churches the struggles that we face, even the divisions that we encounter. And I know, Lord, this is an annual conference and all that. We pray for them today. We pray for the leaders, our bishop, Lord, our district superintendent. And God, we pray for the annual conference as well as the general. And today, God, we, we thank you for your blessings, and we come before you, and we pray this prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, uh, for our offering, we want to uh, just thank you for your giving today. And uh, we're going to sing our doxology. And then uh, we'll ask... Uh, there she is. We, uh, Melinda. 
Sorry, would you uh, would you say the prayer after we sing our doxology? If you were able to stand. Be seated. Filling in for Ron today, he's calling our sick dog. Um, our sermon text is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with the new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before coming the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day of Pentecost. Thank you for the miraculous signs and wonders that you showed on that day and thank you for the blessing of our pastor to open this word to us to interpret and explain and, and help us feel that miracle in our hearts and in today um, in, in jesus name we pray Thank you, Beth, and wonderful job on that reading. Uh, you had a difficult passage, and I knew if anybody could do it, you could. Uh, Ron's probably glad he didn't have to read that today. There's a lot of different uh, dialects there and uh, pronunciation, so thank you so much for that. So our text today is 
the howling. And it comes from this passage here in the scripture because it says that they heard the sound. Let me back up here. That when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And some of the texts, like our text in Sunday school, says literally a howling. Now, I don't know about you, I, I, not everybody is weird like me, but I, I grew up uh, watching Chiller 13 and the old classic horror movies. Uh, much unlike uh, many of the horror movies today, which are very gruesome and dark, um, in those days, the, the scary movies usually had involved a cross and, and a, a minister, uh, <clears throat> and it usually had uh, you know, good and bad and light and darkness and all those things. And it was easy to tell who the good guy was and the bad guy was. And uh, usually uh, in the movie, by the time of the end, the good triumphed over evil. But as you think about movies, even like The Howling and different movies of werewolves and creatures of the night and sounds that were mysterious and scary, I imagine that it wasn't all that much different on the day of Pentecost. And it begins by saying that when the day come, and they were expecting something, but they didn't know what. The day of Pentecost, known as the, the, the Feast of Weeks, was a day, penta meaning 50, uh, and this was a day that they come together from all parts of the world. They would come and gather in this one holy city of Jerusalem for this particular day. So that was no different than any other day. But what happened that day was different. Because the disciples and many of the, there were men and women and children, uh, about 120 and more, were gathered together in one place. First of all, that is, a, I think, a testimony to the importance of gathering together. In our world of social media and the ability to be able to electronically air our services, I think it's wonderful for people who are shut in and for people who are not able to be here. But I want to say that nothing really takes the place of gathering together. You can find it all through the scripture. In fact, the scripture says, uh, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Even so, as we see, as the manner of some is, even so, as we see the day approaching. And so it's, there's something about coming together in the people of God where God can show up. And uh, sometimes we can miss that. But when they were all together on, in one place, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the house. It sounded much like probably a wolf howling. You can just imagine. And it was just a dramatic event. And if you think about this mysterious event, it was nothing like they'd ever seen or experienced before. It was so dramatic that the people in the town started coming out to see what was going on and began to gather around because it filled the entire house where they were and they were not sure what was going on. They were all wondering what in the world is happening? What's going on in this place? And so it is that when God begins to show up and begin to move and you see the move of God, people begin to move out and to see what that is, if nothing else, out of curiosity. And then it says, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and the tongue rested on each of them. And <clears throat> I mentioned this in Sunday school that the word tongue simply means language. And all these people that were there, many of them spoke in different dialects. They were, you know, Beth, I'm not going to read that again, but Beth read all the different uh, dialects and in the, in the areas that people were from. And many of them spoke in different uh, languages. 
And so as they were praying and singing and praising God, they spoke the language that they spoke. And people in that day, primarily when they, uh, especially in that area, would speak Greek. And many of them spoke <clears throat> what would be called the Koine Greek, which was the common speaking of the people in that time. Which, by the way, is also what the scripture, the New Testament, was written in, the Koine Greek, which was not the classical language of, of the Greek, but the more common language of the people. Why is that? Because God, get this, God wants us to understand His Word. See, God could have allowed them to write the New Testament in the uh, more classical Greek, but then many people could not have understood it as well. So he had them write it in a very common language, the Koine Greek. Just so you know, there's a lot of people think that the, that the Bible was written in King James. It wasn't. It was written long before King James come along. And also the fact that our language continues to change today. And you may have noticed that when we read the scriptures today, uh, most of the time we, when we write, when we put these on the screen, they're from the New Revised Standard Version. I think it's a very good uh, version. But there's other versions out there. And sometimes they're a little different. There might be a word here or there. But most of these Bibles, the New American Standard Bible, the New International Version, these were written... <clears throat> Um, and were based on ancient Hebrew and Greek texts. And I hope I'm not getting too uh, technical today, but just as I, I want to make the point today that God really wants us to understand. And so when these were written, the, the New International, the New American Standard, the New Revised Standard Version, by the time these books were written, they had found more ancient manuscripts, even more ancient than the ones that they had when the King James was written. And so the New American Standard, for example, is based upon more ancient manuscripts. So I would think that it would be closer to the original than even the King James. I love the King James, grew up on the King James. Uh, I memorized many of the scriptures of the King James. But I just want you to understand that the Apostle Paul didn't write King James. He didn't know King James. Uh, and it's not the Holy Spirit language. Uh, but... God gave the people a language that they understood. And so today, it's okay to read a version that you understand, that's more understandable and true to you. And so what was taking place on that day was basically this. They were speaking in their own individual language. For example, Peter preached in the language that he spoke. But everyone understood them in their language. You get that? They spoke their language, but if you were from Medes or uh, one of those other places, <coughs> you understood it in the language of your native tongue. That was a miracle on the day of Pentecost. It wasn't that they were getting up speaking gibberish or speaking some ecstatic utterance that made no sense to anyone. It wasn't a time of confusion. It was really a time where there was no confusion. Because they were able to hear, this is the miracle, they were able to hear the Word of God being preached in their own language, even though the person speaking may not have known their language. Wow! What a miracle was that. It would be something like today, if I were to go to a, a different country and preach in the language, the only language that I know, and all of a sudden people begin to hear it in their own language. That's the miracle. In the book of Acts, there's only about three instances of speaking in tongues, if you will. And I believe that all three instances is similar to what happened. This kind of sets the precedent of what happened. They were speaking in a language that was a known language, maybe a foreign language. But it was a known, understood language, and people were able to hear it or were able to interpret it into a language that others could understand. And so a person would speak, and they'd either hear it in their language or someone would interpret it so that the whole crowd 
would understand. And Paul spends an entire chapter on the problem of being uh, confusion in 1 Corinthians. And he talks about the fact that if someone comes into the church and they speak in a language that nobody understands and no one interprets it and it's left there, then what good is it? There is no benefit to us. If I got up here today and spoke in a language that you did not understand, tell me what good that would do you today. But the Paul said, speak, you know, I would rather speak, you know, 10 words in my own understanding than 10,000 in unknown understanding. So what is the point of this? The point is God wants you to get it. It's clarity, and God is not the author of confusion. I have some brothers and sisters in Christ who I love, who, uh, who are Pentecostals and charismatic, and I'm not knocking any of that. Uh, I, I believe everyone had the, you know, worship the Lord in the way you worship them. But as far, far as our church, as the pastor of this church, and I had this happen before. We, uh, we want to have understanding. And so we, we want to make sure that we're being clear and that we're speaking that something that we understand. There are churches in Lexington where they're really uh, Korean, for example. They have an entire congregation that are Korean. They don't have an English person get up and speak. At that church, they have a Korean person speak so that they can understand it. And, of course, it makes sense. And that's what the miracle was on that day. And it was an amazing thing. And it said that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke another language as the Spirit gave them ability. And there were Jews from every part of uh, people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and they were bewildered because... They heard them speaking in the native language of each. And they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And yet how we hear each of them in our own language. And it mentions all these places. And it says, we, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. They were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? What is going on? Some of them, as always, made fun of them. And they said, no, these guys are drunk. These, are, these people, they, they've been nipping at the wine a little bit. And Peter said, no. Living, he said, fellow Jews and live in Jerusalem, listen to what I say. These are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. As Will Willimon said once, he basically said, we're not drunk yet. <laughs> it's early. It's too early. We're, you know, we're not, and plus they were probably fasting because of this, uh, this festival that was going on, which was uh, kind of the type of thing to do. But Peter's saying, it's nine o'clock in the morning. You think we're, you know, we're not raging alcoholics here. We're not drinking at nine o'clock in the morning. That is not what is going on. But this was spoken through the prophet Joel. That in the last days it will be declared that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And so Peter is basically saying a couple things here. One, we're not drunk. And two, what is happening before you today was prophesied and it's a move of God. It was something that God planned. This is a God thing. This is a God thing. And I want to say today... That in this message, really what we want to hear is this. Is God wanting to do a work in our life? And if God were to come in this church today and fill this place in, in, one, in one service with the Holy Spirit in such a way that it would just felt like everyone was just out of their minds or drunk, would it scare us a little bit? Would it scare us a little bit? What if God decided to do something today that wasn't in the bulletin? If God just showed up and said, I want to, I want to do a work among you, and I'm going to fill you today, and you know, we're just going to, I'm just going to take over the service. Will we, will we be okay with that today? 
we'd be okay. Us Methodists who, who like to be methodical and, and have everything reserved and in order, we'd be, be okay today if God just got a hold of us today and shook us to our core. How many of us today would say, come, Holy Spirit, come? And how many of us would run out the door? I'm not saying out of order. Because God is a man, God is a God of order. Paul said, let all things be done in decency and in order. And I grew up, I grew up in the Baptist church, but I got saved in the Pentecostal church. And I used to sing and play at tent revivals in these Pentecostal church. And I saw some crazy stuff that I do not believe was a move of God. But at the same time, I admire the zeal and the dedication that some of my charismatic brothers and sisters have. I think sometimes it wouldn't hurt us to have a little bit of that. I think, I think sometimes it would be okay for us to let go of our dignified self and be undignified for a moment and just praise God and thank God for His blessing for what He's done for us. It might be okay for a tear to fall once in a while, for an amen or a hallelujah. That might be in order today, as long as we're not doing it to draw attention to ourselves. And so, are you ready for God to do something different in your life today? Are you ready for that howling of the wind, that move of the Holy Spirit, that comes from heaven and stirs the soul. Here's how it takes place. They were all together in one place, and they were praying. Every time a move of God is done in our world, it's when the people of God are praying. And if there ever was a time we need to be praying, it's now. It's now. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Would you say that with me? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. And if you would, I'm going to have you join me with the, uh, the Apostles' Creed here in just a moment, if I have that. As we think about the coming of the Holy Spirit, we're also reminded how Jesus came and offered himself for us and as a result of that we're going to have communion and Sandy would you care to grab me one I, I didn't get uh, communions anybody need a communion cup uh, raise your hand and we'll get you one see some getting them now join me if you would in the uh, Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law, and we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen.
name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which you gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dear Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and Your Holy Church, all honor and your glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you today. These are a little tricky. Next time we're going to get some easier to open. Body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you. As the musician comes. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time and thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the word of God and for the, the life that Jesus has given. May you bless it. Amen. Let's stand as we sing number 347, the Spirit Song.
do our benediction and our closing song will be a little different this time for our communion service. Go out among the outcasts and the grieving and speak the word of life and hope. And may the God who breathe life into creation be your delight. We have peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now let's sing, Blessed be the tide of the vines. So let's do verses 1 and 4 in your hymn on page 557. Thank you.